I'm Alien St. Hilaire, and in this video, we're going to talk about Mesh Central's login key feature, also known as three factor authentication. One factor or one topic that keeps coming up over and over again is Mesh Central security. And one of the things you may want to do with Mesh Central if you're running a Mesh Central website on the internet is to hide it, to try to find a way so that people can't scan and discover your website. And so there's this feature called um, uh, login key or three, we call it sometimes three factor authentication that allows you to hide your website and uh, to some extent so that uh, people can't access it unless they know an additional piece of information. So let's take a look at how this works. So I'm going to switch over here to my trusty developer server. I have it running right there and you can see the web page on the right. I'm logged in right now. So I can click and, you know, connect to another machine and so on. And that works fine. So I'm going to log out <clears throat> and right now, the web page, the login page is visible. So if you navigate to this URI, you'll see this web page. And now, of course, this is an internal uh, developer UI on my own network because my server is right here. But, uh, but this would work in the real world. And so I want to be able to hide this login page. And so I'm going to go to my config.json file. And right now I have a super small config.json file, and that's all I need to run this. In fact, I don't even need the title because by default it's Mesh Central, and I don't even need this port or this redirection port because they're all they're set to default. But uh, it doesn't matter. So I have this tiny little config.json file, and I'm going to add a key in the domain section of my config.json, and it's called login key. And you can put a string, for example, uh, you know, some password like Bob. Now, this is not a particularly secret password, um, but uh, hopefully, what you do is you, you know, you, you can rotate it occasionally, and uh, and hopefully, only your friends or some people you know know about it. Now, when you put login key and a password like Bob right here, then I'm going to reset the server. And I'm going to try to access the, the, uh, the login page. And now it says not found. <clears throat> and the reason it says not found is because you need this extra piece of information, the word Bob, to access the login page. So the way you do this is, of course, there's no prompts. There's no way you can enter this in the web page. What you do is you go into the URI and you put um, interrogation point key equals Bob, enter. And when you do that, the login page will show up right there, key equal Bob. And then once you do this, uh, then you can log in. So I'm gonna log in using my dummy account here, and I'm logged in. As, as, you, as I'm logged in, you'll notice that the key equal Bob sticks on the URI. So that's important because um, basically, as long as you have key equal Bob on the URI here, you will continue to see the web page. If I remove this, if I remove the key equal Bob, then it says not found. So this is kind of required information to see the page. And so then I can go and navigate and connect and do all my remote control stuff and everything. And what you'll notice is things like um, the invite feature. If I click on invite, it will, it will add key equal Bob at the end of the invite link. Or if you do a share, uh, for example, I'm going to you know, add a share here for device share. We'll call it test. Uh, let's see, notify only, OK. And it gives me a, a device share link. If I click on the link, then you'll see at the end of the link, it should say, oh, actually, device sharing doesn't have, um, does not have the login key. And actually, this is on purpose because the, um, if you give the device share to somebody else, this URI to somebody else, then uh, you, you, know, you presume that these other people do not have the login key. So that's what that works. So I'm going to delete that, those active shares here. But anyway, 
So you'll see that not all the pages are blocked. So if, if a page requires some piece of information, then you must have acquired it somehow and it allows it. But uh, in many, many cases, like for example, chat, let's try chat. This one, yeah, this one doesn't need it. Uh, I don't think so. And that's because you have this long key in the URI that basically grants you access to this feature. So, you know, you don't need the login key. But otherwise, uh, in a lot of pages here, you'll need the key equal Bob to log in, uh, to, to even see the website. Okay, uh, another thing that's interesting is obviously I can change this key. So if I put Bob2 here, reset the server, and then try again, now it says not found, and that's because I need Bob2, and then I get the, the, the page. The other thing I want to mention is that you can put multiple login keys. So you put the array uh, bracket in JSON, and you can say, for example, Bob1 special secret2, and then, and then we'll try capitalization. Um, let's try Joe, but I'm going to try it with a capital letter here. So now I'm going to have three secrets, and it doesn't matter which one you use. They're all equivalent. So I'm going to hit refresh. It says not found because Bob2 is not part of this list. So I'm going to try Joe, but I'm not going to capitalize it. And you're going to see here not found. So this is capital sensitive. So I'm going to put Joe with a capital. And there we go. It works. And then I can try secret two. There it goes. And it works also. So yeah. Um, so this is super useful if you uh, you have a small server and you kind of want to hide the, the, the uh, login page. Now, this will not completely hide the server because the agents um, do not require any of these login keys. So if you're an agent, you can still connect uh, WebSocket to the server and those uh, work perfectly. So, you know, somebody who's very astute could scan your your. A server, and even if they don't know the login key and can't access the web page, they could just looking at the replies of your server and the URIs you're, you're replying to, um, they could discover that this is a mesh central instance. But uh, it does help a little bit with uh, you know obfuscating your server, especially from bots and other things like that. So if you have a private server, um, you know consider using this. Now uh, the reason why we call it three-factor authentication is because normally you have a password to log in. Uh, you have a second factor, maybe SMS or a backup code or a FIDO key. Well, this is kind of a layer on top of all that. So you need this first thing or this third factor just to see the login page. And then you'll see the login page and you can log in with your password and then you know, apply your two-factor authentication. So this is kind of something you can use on top of everything else uh, if you have two-factor authentication or so on. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was useful. Uh, hopefully you'll use this especially on uh, small private networks. If you have, if you're the only administrator or the only user of a server, probably not a big deal to uh, use this all the time. And then you can bookmark the URI with the key inside the bookmark so that when you access it, it works. But when a bot tries to access it, it doesn't work. Anyway, hope that was helpful. Thank you.